Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance, trying a little bit different style of a video. Originally I was just going to show a kitchen walkthrough and the most common problems in the kitchen. I wound up going through everything. Uh, actually was a couple of little bloopers in there. I uh, actually found a leak that uh, I show in the video. I thought I had it fixed. It's not fixed. I need to go back and fix it. But that's kind of the neat the thing day. about video is sometimes you discover things that you haven't seen there before. So uh, here it is. If you like these kind of videos, you've got to let me know by hitting the like button. Otherwise, I won't know to make more. Yeah, Kung Fu Maintenance. I thought I'd take you through a bunch of stuff that goes on in the kitchen. Kind of do a little bit of a different style of video than what I normally do. All right here's your refrigerator. Uh, most common problems with the refrigerator is a uh, stuck fan motor. Uh, that will cause uh, the uh, freezer to still be cold, but the fridge not to be getting cold. You got an ice maker. Sometimes you can have problems uh, there with the ice maker. You got a paddle here when it gets full, when the unit's turned on, when it gets full and it lifts the paddle and that's how the unit knows how to turn off. Uh, that's the ice maker. Uh, there are some deeper stuff with ice makers, but a lot of times it's just replacing the ice maker when it's faulty. But uh, it's kind of skipping through. You got door bars that go in different ways and there's all, every single refrigerator has a different style doorbell and uh, doorbell <laughs> door bar <laughs> yeah okay the shelves uh shelves come out in various different ways this particular one actually just lifts and pulls out you gotta lift up at the at the uh the back no <laughs> boy i'm on a roll today huh anyway uh the other thing that happens is sometimes you get a clogged freezer condensate line and then you get drips down inside that's usually a clogged freezer drain line most of those you uh, unclog by taking out the back there and then get to the drain line and then some of them which I believe this model is one of them you take this part down there's a screw here and then it locks into the peg back here and you slide this forward and it's a lot of times trapped in right up here is, is your ice line so you just defrost the ice and now that restores the condensate line refrigerator moves moisture and a lot of the heat is trapped in the moisture and that's what goes down the condensate line. Goes to a drain pan that usually sits either up below the fridge, top of the compressor, sometimes the fan assists to remove heat as well as to dry the condensate. Then there's a microwave. A lot of times it's not doing repairs on microwaves. There are some videos out there on smaller repairs. Um, I've done some videos showing the uh, buttons that aren't working in small repairs like that. Um, then, you know, there's circuit control repairs uh, on the door, replacing the door and stuff. But a lot of times it's just more cost effective replacing a microwave. Small repairs that can be made is uh, re replacing the plate that you break by accident. <laughs> no, replacing the peg here. Uh, there's a slot on one side and you use a flat blade screwdriver to turn and lift it out. I show it better in another video. So a lot of these things I can link to in videos. And if you uh, don't see something specifically that you'd like to see, go ahead and, and give a holler. Uh, the microwave, uh, usually is model number and serial number is located here. Sometimes they're on the left side, usually, or somewhere uh, around the opening of the door. Refrigerators, the model and serial number usually is top left of the, freeze, the freezer, fresh food. Fresh, bleh, fresh food compartment. <laughs> They're all slightly different, but that's usually where you find them. Sometimes you might find them here, but it's usually there top left. Dishwashers. On the dishwasher, your model number is usually inside left right here. Uh, common things that go wrong with a dishwasher is the float cup gets built up with uh, food deposits and then it leaks from the front. Um, all these things again I show in a lot of my other videos, but I'm just going to rehearse it now. Sometimes you get glass and stuff like that built up or debris underneath uh, this plate back here. That can be cleaned out. And then the most common ones is uh, shooting water from here. That's from the air gap line. You can pull this part up and run a special hose down here or sometimes you can stick your finger into it from this side into the drain line. Kind of free it up. Block this side while, while uh, you do it. and. Uh, I show all these more, and that's the air gap drain line clogged, okay? Um, other things that there's, uh, if this door is falling open really heavy, there's some of them use a special cable across the front that you can replace that cable on a spring assembly. Um, others use a special deal that latches around the side back of spring uh, on each side. 
So they're a little bit different, but those are uh, some of the most common problems. Uh, another thing that happens sometimes with a dishwasher when it sits empty is the impeller freezes up. All you have to do is get in there with the machine turned off and unplugged. Turn the fan blades or turn the impeller. Some impellers you can reach and turn them by hand. Some of them you got to kind of get in there with a screwdriver and turn the impeller itself until it frees up. That gets you through 90% of uh, you know problems with dishwashers. Cabinet doors, you got got uh, cabinets sometimes that get misaligned. They can actually be adjusted. The front screw is usually the pivot and uh, the back screw is, is um, usually the set screw, but they are all a little bit different. This one's a little bit different. This screw adjusts the pivot uh, left and right of the door. So top and bottom, and then you can get the shifting. I don't know if that made sense, shifting. <laughs> and, uh, and then this one goes up or down. So to lower it, so adjusting this back screw. And uh, this one adjusts the distance from the frame. You know, again, each hinge is a little bit different, but it, playing around with those, you don't need to take the screws out, just adjusting them a little bit will do a lot for you and, and get you aligned on the door most of the time. <laughs> uh, next is you got these cabinet shelves. You got shelf pegs. Uh, my particular pegs are kind of an odd size. This is a 3 16 inch size. And, um, you know, most st standard, I forget what the standard size is. Maybe I'll find it put on the video, or if you know already, just give a shout. It's common, but uh, they're easy to find. And, uh, you know, shelf pegs sometimes break, so replacing those is a common repair needed with cabinets. Um, some types of melamine cabinets, the strips will peel a little bit, a little bit of silicone, you can glue them back down, no big deal. Uh, it's fairly easy. Um, next you got your kitchen sink. Um, this one's a single handle faucet. This one uh, is pretty common to leak right here, so just making sure this is tight periodically as people pull it and put it back and this deal comes out, you know. Um, this is a single cartridge faucet on this particular one. You rotate it for hot and cold, da 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 da. You know, these are a pretty good faucet. I haven't had one leak yet, but the cartridge is replaceable. Um, the other thing is just making sure that it's sealed down, you know, using plumber's putty underneath it, that that's tightened up. Um, then we come to uh, kitchen sinks, sink strainer basket. These sometimes leak. There's a lot of different varieties in sink strainer baskets and sink basket styles. Um, most of them you'll tell the difference from the bottom. This one screws on all the way to the top. There's another kind that has a cup, and then when you tighten this deal up, that's what tightens it up, so they're all a little bit different. Um, on the left side, you got your garbage disposal. This is a ring, snap ring style uh, drain that the garbage disposal locks into. Uh, when you loosen this, these screws, it's got three screws here that tighten the plate up against the top, and then it's got a snap ring underneath there, so you have to loosen those up, take the snap ring off. I'll have to show you that one, because I got a trick for that. Uh, that I'll show you uh, hopefully in an upcoming video um, for an easier way to get that on. It is difficult when you're by yourself to do it, but it's not too bad. Garbage disposal's common problems is uh, um, jam. Happens all the time. Somebody drops something in there and gets stuck. You use a special disposal wrench to uh, free it up. On the bottom, you've got a reset button. This is an overload protection. Protects the motor of the garbage disposal so that it doesn't give out on you. And uh, it's very nice that it has that there and that it prevents you having to replace more and more exposures. Um, and then a lot of times you can reach down with the unit off or unplugged and uh, retrieve whatever's down there. Fish tank, blah. Fish tank gravel is yeah, your most common clogger. It's uh, what it gets it all the time. To uh, make it work better after everything's cleared out, uh, throw in some ice down there or cl clear the grinding ring. Keep everything a little bit cleaner. Uh, a lemon wedge once in a while for odors and smells works really good. Uh, kitchen sinks, uh, these can be polished up uh, and you can regrain them with a green kitchen sponge. It's the one thing you want to use a green sponge on. You never want to use a green sponge on windows. I get every once in a while someone comment to say that to do that, you never want to do that. A green sponge has little bits of metal in it, it'll scratch the glass and you, you, you won't get those scratches out, so it's not good. Uh, the other thing on a lot of uh, finishes for, for uh, refrigerators, you don't want to use the green scrubbers either. They're prone to leaving little tiny 
scratches and uh, it's just not the same material really as a stainless steel kitchen sink. The stainless uh, fridge is sometimes the material is just not as strong and it's you know it'll take scratches and that's not what you want. So you know first do no harm. The physician's kind of my motto there. Uh, most plumbing these days is slip joint plumbing. This stuff just goes together and it's got beveled washers. It's usually hand tightened. Just kind of show you real quick. Just uses a system of a plastic beveled washer that slides down. <laughs> you didn't see that, huh? That slides down into the other fitting, and it, it slid, slid over the the pipe, and the pipe extends a little bit into the, the the one below it and next to it. Very very simple, common stuff. Uh, you'll see other tubular plumbing that sometimes uses an O-ring, but it's the same principle. Uh, if it's metal tubular. It uses uh, a flat washer, but it's a rubber washer, so it's a little bit more flexible. Um, and it may not really be rubber, neoprene rubber, you get the idea. It's a flexible, but it's not this hard, rigid plastic like, like uh, this one is. Uh, there's your trap. Uh, most common clogs you get on a kitchen sink is carrots and potato peels coming down here to the trap and hanging up in the T. That's the most common spot happens all the time. Uh, you can undo this and twist this and then clear it out and then it's fairly easy. That's your most common clog point. A lot of people think it's the trap and they, they go and clear the trap and go, oh, it's clear, clear, and then they run and they still got a clog because the clog's up here. And uh, But anyway, that's where your most common clog is. You know, other clogs you can get in the trap. Sometimes if somebody dumps a whole bunch of rice or something that goes and clogs down in the trap and then that's that. But also people putting grease down the drains, bad idea, <laughs> not good because that grease can build up and block here and that's a, a whole nother mess. Um, anyway, that's a bit about kitchen sinks. Next we've got the stove. There's a couple different types of stoves and ranges. Uh, model number for ranges. Where'd it go? That's because it's hiding down below. If you pull the drawer out here on the bottom left side, there's your model number. Yeah, and that's where you can find the model number for most stoves, okay? There's also actually a hidden manual a lot of times under here, and also sometimes uh, back behind here on the right side there can be an envelope uh, with hidden manuals for stoves. You can check my videos on that, I show it a bit more. Uh, things that go out on stoves in the oven, you know, you've got your oven racks, they all come out in a little bit different way. This one you just lift, other ones you got to lift up from the back and then slide it out. They're all a little bit different, but you know, there's just don't force anything. Just kind of, you know, you'll figure it out. Just kind of look at it, and, you know. Uh, elements, oven elements. Here, up here is your broiler element. Back there is your light bulb. A couple different styles for light bulbs, but uh, most of them just have a, a wire cover that you bend over, and then you can remove it. And then now you can remove your light bulb and replace your light bulb. And there it is. And uh, this one actually has a switch. Or I have a broken light bulb. <laughs> ah, let's see. Oven light, there it is. Oven light, we'll hit the button. There's light. So I don't have a broken bulb, it's just on a switch. Most other ones will actually, when you open the, the light, it'll, it'll turn on. And uh, so that's a little bit different on this one. Um, and on the ones that have a light, there used to be like a little door switch here, a little button that comes out, so. Yep, anyway, that's ovens. Got the backsplash here. I got a few videos showing stuff on backsplashes, you know. I'm not really super expert in that area, just kind of get you through it. Check out uh, Sal DeBlazy's channel. Um, he does some, some good, really good uh, tile videos. It's much more in depth than, than uh, what I showed, but you know, do what you gotta do. Uh, electrical stuff going on in the kitchen. A lot of times uh, outlets can be linked on a GFI like this one. There's a little test button, a little reset button. Sometimes they're linked to a refrigerator. So if you have a refrigerator that all of a sudden has no power, that's one of your first things to check. The light bulb's not coming on, the fridge isn't coming on. Check the GFI, make sure that that didn't pop and then, you know, it's caused, uh, you know, before your food goes bad or anything along those lines. Um, drawers, you know, these have drawer rails. They sit on feet on a, on a rail there, little rollers. Um, not too much to it. Sometimes you'll get one that you need to put a little spacer in to move the, the wheel over so it sits and doesn't pop. 
but uh, sometimes drawers come apart a little bit. Um, sometimes, you know, but most of that stuff you can just kind of figure out. You got your door handles, all that's pretty normal. They occasionally need tightening up. All right, and that's uh, about it for the kitchen. Ceiling fan, common problems are uh, uh, ceiling fan balancing. You can check out my video, probably one of my most hated videos, but uh, you use a balancing kit and you just go around, set your balancing deal that clips on in the middle, turn it on, see if it's uh, wobbly, and then change it to each blade in the same spot until you see which one has the least wobble. And then slide it up or down on that blade to get the least wobble and then that's where you're going to put your weight and you just clean it first da -da -da -da. anyway that, that's that uh, a lot of different ceiling fans have a lot of different types of lights this particular kind is really bad about uh, getting offset in that uh, sometimes if this is turned the wrong way then when you pull the the deal it's not really pulling straight from the switch it's putting a lot of tension on the chain so that's just this particular design so you just want to make sure it's nice and straight up and down from where the switches are the alignment uh, these are pretty easy to replace just, just uh, fold it over and fold it in from the little doodad um, that's that I uh, show some changing ceiling fan light kits and uh, a lot of other stuff um, sometimes there's some that a particular light bulb, if you don't have the correct wattage, then the, the light blinks out. I show that pretty good in, in, a, in other videos, so uh, check those out. Electrical, electrical supply, You've got uh, black, which is on the right, negative or uh, white, blah, neutral, which is on the left, you know, um, and then your ground, hot, neutral, and ground. That's your three uh, for your outlets. A lot of times these are line and load. Power comes in on one side of the outlet, continues to the next outlet. Um, just to explain it a little bit, and then the switches. Switch is just a hot between the hot, breaking, making or breaking the connection, turn on the light. Um, cable outlets. I show a little bit in some videos about how to hide cabling, running uh, cabling, especially when you have carpet. It's a little bit easier. Baseboards. Um, have a few baseboard repair videos. I got one coming up that I'll show you where if you had a little bit, some baseboards are bad about uh, if they ever get wet, somebody mopped and the mop got the, the uh, baseboard wet just a little bit, then sometimes it doesn't want to take paint. So I show a little bit how to make uh, repairs on that so they don't take paint in the future. Um, washing machines is the next big one. Oh, and I did show one on doing these knobs, so maybe you might remember that. But uh, washing machines, uh, this is a stackable washer, washer dryer, your lint filters in the back, which this one is falling out, so just gonna put that back in. Sometimes these get a little loose, what you gotta do is take the tabs here and fold them out a little bit so that you get a better connection, and then it can lock in there a little bit stronger, so doing that here. And now it locks in a lot stronger, not going to fall out on you. Uh, dryers, a lot of times, uh, lid switch is a common thing that breaks. Dryer won't turn on if the lid switch not engaged. Kind of the same thing with the washing machine. I show the lid switches a whole lot. Uh, how to replace those, uh, you know, they can be bypassed for testing purposes. Um, and then you want to make sure that your agitator is working so it, it turns at least one way when you turn it in your agitator. Uh, balance for a washing machine, if it balances empty with water, your balance is fine. Sometimes if, you, if someone's not sure or you're not sure, you can run it uh, with, empty with water and then purposefully pull it off balance and see if it finds its balance and then it's good there. Sometimes uh, you can just use something to engage the lid switch while you do it. So it starts on the spin cycle and then just pull it carefully and uh, make sure it finds its balance. Um, so that's a little bit on washing machines. I go into more depth on those on um, five most common problems with washing machines. Today I'm just going a fast walkthrough. You want to make sure that your dryer vents are all sealed and, and uh, good. Um, no air from there. Um, other stuff is a bathroom vanity, making sure the handles on this particular brand is very common for the handles to uh, uh, come loose. Um, and then uh, leak checking. 
uh, faucets and like and toilets and everything else the field test is really effective you know looking under there is also good a visual test but the field test is much much more you can see faster with your hands a lot of times than you could with anything else and so this stuff can show up another trick is the pressure test where you pull the plug let it fill with enough water release it and then that forces a lot of water through a lot stronger, a lot faster, and a more minuscule leaks can show up. Uh, other places on the supply lines in between the angle stops, these are nice quarter turn angle stops, so there is no front mat bit to leak. There is a turning point there, but uh, it's a lot less likely to leak. But anyway, any connection point, and then just tracing the supply line, and the supply is up top all the way to the top. Again, that'll make uh, minus, you, you know, you're more likely to see with your finger any kind of leak looking for moisture. Here goes the pressure test. I went ahead and released the pop up. And we're just looking through, and again, you can feel and see and prove that we have no leaks. I like to hit these kind of things first. I'd rather find it now than later. It's no fun when you find it later because they do a lot of damage in a hurry. Hey, and look at that. I found, mo I had moisture. Ho, ho, ho. See? Pays, pays to check it. What I have is a leak on the pop-up rod itself right here. So, I'm gonna tighten that. It was just a little loose. So, uh, I'm gonna go grab my rag. And, uh, well, maybe I can just try this one kind of quickly. And then we'll retest. See, it pays the check for this stuff because, you know, if I find it now, nobody's unhappy about that. But if somebody else goes and puts their stuff in here and it gets all wet, they're not going to be too happy. So once again, we'll just do the, try to get you a better view here. I don't know if I'm getting you a better view. Oh boy, there is a better view. So we'll, we'll pull it. And we're nice and nice and dry now. And now we'll prove it. Is it gonna leak? No! We fixed it. <laughs> so that's that. So a little simple stuff. You know, that's the stuff that gets you though. Alright. Medicine cabinets just verifying that they latch, that the, you know, sometimes you have to replace a magnet or whatnot. They're clean, all that good stuff. Occupancy sensors, these are a little bit different type of switch. You have some customization of, of ability under here you can set it for vacant so you can turn it into just the switch this little switch here make it just an on off switch pretty straightforward occupied is where it is now it'll turn off after a set amount of time of no movement it'll turn back on when somebody walks in and there's movement you can adjust the time the range and the light uh, all different adjustments you can make with a little screwdriver I'll have to go into that one a bit more in the future, but I've just given you a quick, quick rundown. So, there we go. Uh, toilets. Uh, toilets can run. That would be your flapper usually. Uh, the fill valve, if it stops uh, working properly, it can whistle. It can uh, fill too much and overflow down the handle here. If you see that from there, loose toilet seats is common. Um, sometimes if the, the toilet was, there was, uh, a paper, piece of paper hanging down when they installed it over the wax ring that can cause leaks from the bottom. Clogs are common. You know, most of that you're not finding on, a, on an inspection like this, but you never know. You know, check it for leaks at all your supply, all the connection points, making sure nothing's leaking, and then all the way to the top. Uh, also, between the tank and toilet bolts, often you get leaks there. Especially if the unit sits empty for a long time and it's really, really hot, if you live in a hot area or if just the heater was left on or whatever, those uh, seals, if they're not getting wet constantly, they can actually shrink. Now, sometimes with those just flushing the toilet and it getting wet again, it'll cause it to re-expand and sometimes it'll seal that leak off and you're okay. Sometimes you have to tighten it up. Sometimes you can tighten the tank to toilet bolts and stop a leak. A lot of times you want to hold that with a large screwdriver on the inside. There's a, a screw for it so you can support it and keep it from moving. And that way if you tighten the bolt, you got a better chance that your repair is going to tighten up and take. 
Uh, for tubs, you got tub cartridges, you got a diverter valve, a lot of different styles of different tubs. Uh, some of them are compression cartridges. This one's a rotation style. It uses a little uh, plastic washer that turns open. Uh, most of those use, you know, they all use O-rings and uh, yeah, I, I got a lot of videos on those. Shower heads, same thing, a lot, of, a lot of videos on shower heads. They can leak here, they can leak here, they can leak here. Um, they can leak here, they can leak here, they can leak anywhere. They can just leak. Hey, and they leak here. But uh, anyway, you know, uh, shower necks can leak, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, we got towel bars. This one's a, a shower marker, shower rod. It's kind of a nice feature. It gives a little bit more room in the tub. A little nice, elegant look. Um, towel bars. This particular towel bar just has a little press and release deal. And the little cap that it mounts to is on the back. Uh, it's not like your traditional towel bars. Other towel bars um, have uh, two screws that go through, or some of them have a hidden set screw and a little mounting plate that goes on the back. I have videos covering all those. Handleware, this is a privacy lock. So um, most of these on any, any bathroom or bedroom has the ability to be opened uh, just with a small tool, small screwdriver, or, or this one can use a regular screwdriver insert it and turn it if it needs to it's just a privacy lock it's not a you know fort knox lock door stops this style is a twist in some of them are a screw in most of them are twist in like this you just untwist and twist in you want to make sure these are in so that you don't get a you know doodad in the door um let's see what else we got vertical blinds you know you got your master control you got your verticals all the gears. Uh, this kind of self-aligning, yeah, it's pretty cool. This is your head rail. It uses valance clips and valances. I had tons of videos on, on those. You guys check out my five most common problems with vertical blinds to see a lot more on that. So let's see. What else? Uh, passage locks. The difference between the privacy lock, this one's the passage lock. As you can see, it just lets you pass right on through. And towel bars, these use the one end cap, one permanent cap. Not a whole lot there. You guys can mostly, you guys mostly know all that stuff. So, uh, carpets, you know, you want to check for any uh, visible stains, anything like that. Uh, sometimes if you just find a small stain, it's just something that's noted on a move-in sheet. And kind of everybody agrees and knows that that was there when they moved in. Just like the scratches I showed you earlier on the refrigerator, it's not big enough to want to replace the refrigerator for. But uh, telephone lines, I show a lot about telephone lines. They're paired lines, uh, red and green and black and yellow. Um, and not a whole lot to there, it's low voltage. But uh, check out my video on that if you'd like to see those. Uh, this is a switched outlet hot. The top half is on the switch. Again, I go through that a lot in a lot of different videos showing you how those are wired and how you can wire them. In the hallway, you've got a three-way switch. This is one side of it. And this is the other side of it. This way each side can control the same switch. So you can control it from either side. And uh, again, I show that more in, in other the thermostat, videos. I go into this a lot in separate videos, but the thermostat is generally and usually low voltage. There are some older styles that use a common that can be 110 voltage or, or even higher. But most of them these days of using low voltage is it's a lot safer and better to control and you have a lot less concerns. Doorbells here. Um, I, I cover it a little bit in different videos. These usually have a transformer that transforms the voltage. This one's up here. You can't see it because it's got a cover on it, but there's a transformer up there that takes the 110 voltage, converts it into a low voltage, 24 to 30 volts, somewhere in there, and controls the doorbell. Um, I have a few video, videos showing you how to troubleshoot doorbell buttons and, uh, you know, just another thing to check. Here's your breaker box. These, it's good if they're labeled so that people can know what's going on. Um, just be careful. Sometimes people accidentally mislabel, especially the AC breaker and the range breaker. Uh, it, I'm not saying it happens a lot, but I'm saying it's just one of those things that's possible. Generally, if I'm going to work on a stove, something deeper, I'll just turn them both off. And that way I know I'm safe. And, and a lot of stuff, when I'm replacing the outlets even, I'll just turn everything off. Why take the chance? You never know what some crazy person did. So <laughs> it's... Uh, and, and even there, verifying with, with a circuit alert device, it's sometimes called a dead man's stick, 
uh, to prove that power is off and no power is going through that circuit is a good idea. Back here is the air handler. This one has hydronic heat. I just did a video the other day showing a lot about the hydronic heat. Uh, I'm going to be showing you another video on how to use this as passive heat. Uh, even without the fan running, this puts out a considerable amount of heat and there's a way to set this up, which this one's already set uh, for that. And it's pretty cool because then you may not even have to run your heater, but you got a lot going on there. Here's your air handler. This has a service door switch, usually about here. This one's screwed shut to make sure that that service door is being held in and that doesn't turn off because sometimes that, that can... Uh, those can be troublesome and they can come out. A lot of times you've got an air filter stacked up against here. This one is a vertical coil. It was uh, seated this way. And uh, so the condensate runs down and into the drain pan, which drains out this drain line here. This side is the suction side, the bigger tube for the air conditioning. This is where it gets really cold and the refrigerant goes in. And on the liquid side, this side is where it's passed back out and pressured out goes back to the unit. So this is the suction, this is the li liquid, Go, and then this goes up to your condenser on a split system. Here's the condensate line. Just like the refrigerator, the air conditioner removes moisture from the air and it, the condensate runs down the condensate drain, drain line and goes to a gravel well out back. Some people's setups are different. Some of them they just drain out back. And uh, But that's the, you know, sometimes you want to put condensate pan tablets in there to prevent mold growth and prevent uh, dirt from getting clogged up and sticking together. It's anticoagulant, uh, anti-mold, all that. So anyway, that's a walkthrough on, you know, a lot of the stuff you'll run into. Uh, this is a, kind of a typical uh, dwelling walkthrough. Let's see what else we got. A shower door. These have a little latch. You just want to make sure your latch is working properly, operating properly. Uh, cleaning, obviously, you want everything to be clean all your lights working and all that. This particular mirror has a frame on it, which is a nice feature. Um, again, all your plumbing tests, doing a pressure test, making sure nothing's leaking and everything's good. And just good stuff to, to uh, make sure, making sure you don't have any drips coming from your shower heads, from your shower line. Everything's nice and dry and everything's off. No leaks, no surprises. Always a good thing. Okay, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. Oh, here's your strike plate. And you just want to verify that your door is latch and lock and all that good stuff. Uh, and I have a lot of different videos showing a lot of this stuff. So anyway, uh, if you guys don't see something covered that you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments below. If you see something covered that you want me to go into deeper and you'd like to know more about that specifically, leave it in the comments below. I really won't know which videos uh, to make for you guys unless you guys uh, shout it out. If you like this, please like this video and let me know that to do this again. Uh, if you'd like me to take a fast walk through and go through all the different stuff that I possibly can in, in different scenarios. Uh, and I missed the smoke alarm. <laughs> uh, this one's a test button. You want to test it every once in a while. A lot of them have a hush button, kind of a nice feature. Not all of them do. Uh, the new requirement is to have them in bedrooms as well as outside the sleeping quarters. So I just recently did the video on that. Um, but that's pretty much the story. <laughs> the, uh, these have a 10 year battery. And uh, if they ever start chirping about 10 years from now, you can release it and then there's a paper that you take the paper off and slide to deactivate it. So uh, won't need that for about 10 years. But 10 years from now, there'll be a lot of people doing that because a lot of smoke alarms just went in right now to satisfy the new law. Hall lights, these are adjustable. Flood lights, they have a depth adjustment. The video is on that. Fire sprinklers, want to make sure that no one's getting any paint on the fire sprinklers. Air filter, good idea to change it every 30 days in your own home. And uh, for, you know, industrial and, you know, other stuff, it's not practical to change it every 30 days. Changing it every three months is good. Every six months at the least, at the absolute least. 
I like these economy grade filters. A lot of guys don't agree with me. Don't blame you, it's fine. But to me, the higher particle resting filters almost arrest too much. This is uh, just right, and as stuff collects on here, it actually starts to filter better because there's less and less space for stuff to travel through, so it collects smaller and small, smaller particles over time. So that's why this one works good for a 90-day change. A lot of guys disagree with me on that, but that's okay. Um, that's been my experience. So, uh, air diffusers, these can be adjusted. You don't really want to close them off all the way. If you close it off all the way, it creates back pressure all the way to the plenum and causes the efficiency of the system to not work as good. If you really don't like one being on, you know, turning it off most of the way is okay, but just not all the way. And even there, it may be just better to leave it open, but you know, it's kind of one of those things if it's really bugging you, do what you gotta do, you know, and see how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching. Kung Fu Maintenance, over now. Oh, and on your front door deadbolt, you wanna make sure that the deadbolt extends all the way into the deal, otherwise you're gonna have problems in the future because it can be easy for someone to stick a tool in there and open it up, so that's that. And you've also got your patio door wheels. Want to make sure everything rolls real smooth, works real good. Your screen door, that everything's on track. I show videos about replacing all the wheels on those, rescreening screens. If you've got holes in the screen, re replacing screen wheels, replacing patio door wheels. Um, there's a lot of stuff there. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. Kung Fu Maintenance. I'm out of breath. I'm going to get some drink of water. I'm going to go drink some water. Okay, right here is the GFI. Outlet often the other bathroom is connected, it's line and load is connected on that same outlet. And not only that, also often an outside outlet, if you have an outlet outside, is often linked on that same outlet. Like here. Hopefully you can see it. I think you can. Yeah, but that's linked on that same outlet. And and uh, so if you have a house or something and you have an outlet that's not working, a lot of times it's a GFI somewhere, maybe in a garage, maybe in an attic, maybe in the most inconvenient of places, but somewhere there may be a GFI tripped, you know, if it wasn't in your breaker box. And there is actually some GFIs on breakers themselves, so just one more thing to check for. If you like these kinds of tips and tricks and uh, methods of getting things done, check out my book, Kung Fu Maintenance. It's only $2.99 as an ebook. You can get it as a regular book, and it's a little bit more expensive, but my thought there was showing you guys how to make the most likely improvements and uh, maintenance and repairs on the most likely things that you're going to need to fix in your life. Thanks for watching. And if you like the music, you can get the albums or you can get the individual songs. Links are in the description below.